Chapter 8 The Deliverance of Jagai and Madhai One day, Lord Chaitanya suddenly ordered Nityananda and Haridas as follows. Listen, listen, Nityananda. Listen, Haridas. Go and preach my order everywhere. Beg everyone. Chant Krishna, worship Krishna, and learn the science of Krishna. Do not preach anything other than this. At the end of the day, come and report it to me. In spite of your begging, if anyone refuses to accept your offer, then I'll come with the chakra to kill him. Hearing this command of Lord Chaitanya, all the Vaishnavas began to smile. In fact, no one has the power to disobey the Lord's order. Ordered by the Lord, Lord Nityananda and Haridas left to fulfill the Lord's mission. Nityananda Prabhu eternally carries the Lord's order on his head. Anyone who doubts this is certainly a fool. Whoever serves Advaita Acharya without accepting Lord Chaitanya will certainly be destroyed by Advaita Acharya himself. Following the order of Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas went to each and every house in Nadia. They requested everyone to chant, sing, and worship Krishna. They further told that Krishna is the life and soul and wealth of everyone. They said, Dear brothers, chant the names of Krishna with full attention. Both Nityananda and Haridas wandered all over Nadia preaching Mahaprabhu's message to everyone. They both dressed as sannyasis, so whoever met them would immediately offer respects and invite them in for lunch. But Lord Nityananda and Haridas Thakur would beg only one thing, chant Krishna, worship Krishna, and learn the topics of Krishna. After pleading in this way, the two would leave that place. Only saintly people, however, were pleased by their request. Hearing the wonderful topic from the mouths of these two lords, people would happily describe them in their own way. Someone would say, I will certainly follow their order. Another would say, these two have become mad by the fault of chanting mantras. There were those who were forbidden to enter into the house of Sri Vas Pandit when Lord Chaitanya was dancing with his followers. As soon as Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas approached their houses, they immediately shouted, Beat them! Beat them! Those people said, You have become crazy by bad association, and now you have come here to make us crazy? Respected and civilized people have all become crazy because of Nimai Pandit. In fact, Nimai has spoiled everyone. Some other people would say, It seems these two are the spies of a thief. In the guise of preaching, they are checking out each house. If they are really saintly persons, then why are they acting like this? If they come again, we'll take them to the police. Hearing this, Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur would simply laugh. They were not the least afraid due to the strength of Lord Chaitanya's order. Both of them would thus regularly visit each and every house and preach. In the evening, they would return to Vishvambara and report everything. One day, Nityananda and Haridas met two drunkards on the way. These two were plunderers, murderers, and addicted to wine and women. There was no end to their misdeeds. There was no sin they had not committed. Though born in a Brahmana family, they ate beef and drank wine. They plundered people's wealth and set fires to people's houses. They absconded from the court and could not spend a day without eating meat and drinking wine. Both these drunkards roamed the streets and very severely beat whomever they caught. People watched them from a distance, daring not to come close. On one such occasion, Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas arrived on the spot. These two drunkards were sometimes very friendly towards each other and sometimes pulled each other's hair in anger. They constantly abused each other with filthy words. We'll degrade the caste of the Brahmanas of Nadia, they exclaimed, fully intoxicated from drinking wine. Their bodies were filled with all kinds of sins. Only the sin of blaspheming the Vaishnavas was not yet committed. Since they spent their days and nights in the companies of drunkards, there were no possibilities for them to commit any offense against the Vaishnavas. Wherever blasphemy of Vaishnavas is done, even in religious places, nevertheless, the place and the blasphemers will be destroyed. 
If blasphemy is done in the assembly of sannyasis, then such a gathering is worse than a den of drunkards. A drunkard may be delivered in course of due time, but there is no salvation for those who criticize a Vaishnava. Even after studying the scriptures, such a blasphemer's intelligence will be ruined. Such persons as dared to criticize Lord Nityananda were thus destroyed. Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas watched from a distance how the two drunkards punched and abused each other with filthy words. Nityananda then asked some of the people of the area, What is the caste of these two? Why are they doing like this? The people replied, O Gosai, these two drunkards are brahmanas. They were born to well-respected parents of a high family. Many of their forefathers lived in Nadia. In fact, there is not even a tinge of fault in their dynasty. Only these two forgot their social duties and commit all kinds of sins since birth. Considering them most sinful, their own family members rejected them since they freely mix with drunkards. The people of Nadia are always afraid of them because at any time these two may set fire on their houses. There are no sins that these two have not committed. They rob, steal, kill, rape, eat meat and drink wine. Hearing about these two drunkards, the most compassionate Nityananda Prabhu began to ponder about their deliverance. Lord Chaitanya has descended to deliver the fallen people of this age. Where will he find anyone more fallen than these two? The Lord has not yet revealed himself to the ordinary people. Not seeing his uncommon influence, they are ridiculing him. If the Lord bestows mercy on these two sinful drunkards, then the people of the entire world will see his transcendental glories. Being known as Nityananda, the servant of Lord Chaitanya, will only have meaning if I can purify their hearts and deliver them. How wonderful it will be if they become intoxicated, chanting Krishna's names the same way they are intoxicated at present. If I can make these two take the Lord's name and cry, I will then consider all my travels to holy places as a success. At present, whoever even touches the shadow of these two drunkards at once bathes in the Ganges with his clothes on. I will be extremely fortunate if I am able to get people to accept that simply seeing these drunkards is the same as bathing in the Ganges. The glories of Lord Nityananda are unlimited. He descended to save the fallen souls. Thinking thus, Nityananda said to Haridas, Haridas, Look how miserable these two drunkards are. They are born in a Brahmana family, but their behavior is most sinful. They will be unable to escape the most severe punishment of Yamaraj. O oh, Haridas, the Muslims beat you so severely that you almost died. Still, you desired welfare for such people in your mind. If you really desire for their welfare in your heart, then surely these two drunkards will be delivered. The Lord never ignores your will. He has often confirmed this fact. Let the people of the entire world see the uncommon influence of our Lord by which He will deliver these drunkards. Just as the deliverance of Ajamil is described in the Purans, similarly, let the people of the three worlds see directly how the Lord will deliver these drunkards. Haridas knew perfectly well the glories of Lord Nityananda. He thought, He will certainly deliver these two drunkards. Harida said, Listen, O Lord, whatever you desire is indeed the desire of Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu. You are deceiving me just as a person deceives an animal. You are always kindly teaching me. Smiling, Nitinanda embraced Haridas and said in an extremely soft tone, Let's go and repeat the Lord's order to these two drunkards. The Lord commands everyone to worship Krishna. This is particularly fitting for the most sinful. Our duty is simply to repeat the Lord's orders. Even after repeating, if it doesn't work, then it is the Lord's will. To impart the message of Lord Chaitanya, both Nityananda and Haridas went before the two drunkards. Some pious people, however, forbid them to go. They warned, if you go near them, you may lose your lives. We're very much afraid of these two drunkards. That's why we always remain inside our houses. 
How dare you go near them? These two don't care for sannyasis. In fact, they are accustomed to killing brahmanas and cows without any discrimination. In spite of the warnings given by many pious people, both Nityananda and Haridas approached the drunkards while chanting Krishna, Krishna. From a little distance, Nityananda and Haridas loudly repeated the Lord's message to the two debauchees. Nityananda and Haridas said, Chant Krishna, worship Krishna, and sing the glories of Krishna. Krishna is your mother, father, wealth, and life. Lord Krishna has mercifully delivered you. Please give up your sinful life and worship him. Hearing the loud voice of Nityananda and Haridas, the two drunkards raised their hands and looked around. Their eyes became red with anger. Seeing the sannyasi features of Nityananda and Haridas, they chased them, screaming, Catch them! Catch them! Nityananda and Haridas quickly ran away. The two plunderers chased them, yelling, Wait! Wait! They ran behind Nityananda and Haridas like a raging storm. The two lords ran away as if in great fear. All the pious people thought, We tried to stop these two sannyasis from going near these drunkards. Now they're in great danger. However, all the atheists began to smile secretly. They said, Today Lord Narayan has awarded fit punishment to those pseudo sannyasis. The pious brahmanas prayed to the Lord, O oh Krishna, please save them. O oh Krishna, please save them. Soon, everyone ran away out of fear. The two drunkards chased and the two lords ran. Though the drunkards shouted, We've almost caught them! They were unable to catch hold of Nityananda and Haridas. While running, Nityananda said to Haridas, O oh Vaishnava Haridas, what do you think? If we survive today, it will be our good fortune. Haridas replied, O oh Lord, what can I say? It's all my fault that we'll soon untimely lose our lives. This is the result of teaching drunkards about Krishna. We'll soon get our just reward in the form of death. Speaking like this, both Nityananda and Haridas ran while smiling. The two drunkards chased the two lords in a fit like a raging storm. They were both fat and unable to run as swiftly as Nityananda and Haridas. They still tried to run as fast as possible. The drunkards yelled at the lords as follows, O oh brothers, where are you going? How will you escape the grip of Jagai and Madai? You don't know who's chasing you. Turn around and see. We are Jagai and Madai here. Feigning great fear, the two lords ran very swiftly hearing the threats of the two drunkards. They prayed, O oh Krishna, O oh Govinda, please save us. Haridas said, I cannot run anymore. Alas! Why did I come with this naughty boy, even knowing his restless nature? Krishna saved me before from the wrath of the Muslims, but now I'm surely going to lose my life because of this naughty boy. Nityananda replied, I'm not a restless person. Think carefully, and you'll find it's your Lord Chaitanya who's restless. Your Lord is but a simple Brahmana, yet he orders like a king. By his order only, we're going door to door to preach his message. Though we carry out his orders preaching door to door, so far, we've not found anyone heeding our request. In fact, people simply call us thieves and cheaters and nothing else. If we don't follow his order, we'll be ruined. And if we do follow, then this is the result. I know you'll not find fault with your Lord, so ultimately it's me who's to blame. Both Nityananda and Haridas quarreled humorously while the two drunkards continued to chase. Finally, Nityananda and Haridas reached Lord Chaitanya's house. Dulled by drinking wine, the two drunkards were quite confused. They were unable to see the two lords anymore. Being baffled, they began to push and pull each other. They were too drunk to understand where they were before or how they reached this place. After some time, Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur looked back. They did not see the two drunkards following them. Both Nityananda and Haridas heaved a sigh of relief and embraced each other. Then they went to go meet Lord Vishvambara. The lotus-eyed Mahaprabhu was sitting inside the house. He looked charming. His beauty conquered the beauty of Cupid. The Lord was sitting surrounded by the Vaishnavas. Everyone was discussing topics of Krishna. The Lord was explaining his own truth to the assembled Vaishnavas just as Lord Narayan 
the Lord of Svetadweep, instructs the sages headed by Sanaka. Just then, Nitinanda and Haridas arrived before the Lord to report the day's activities. They said, Today we've seen two strange persons. They're heavy drunkards, yet they call themselves Brahmanas. We politely asked them to chant the holy names of Krishna, but they chased us in anger. We're fortunate to be alive. The Lord asked, Who are those two strangers? What are their names? Being Brahmanas, why are they acting like that? By the way, Ganga Das and Sri Vas Pandit were also sitting there. Both of them revealed all the sinful activities committed by these drunkards. They said, Oh Lord, their names are Jagai and Madai. They're the sons of a pious Brahmana. By bad association, these two have become so degraded. They cannot live without wine for even a single day. The people of Nadia are most afraid of them. There is no house in Nadia where these two have not committed theft. There is no end to their sins. O oh, Gosai, you must have seen them and known everything. Lord Chaitanya said, Yes, yes, I know them very well. If they come here, I'll cut them both to pieces. Nityananda said, You can do whatever you want. But as long as these two drunkards are around, I'm not going to preach. Why do you needlessly brag about yourself? First, you make them chant the names of Govinda. By nature, a pious person chants the holy names of Krishna. But these two drunkards don't know anything except committing sin. If you can deliver these two persons by awarding them devotional service, then your name as the deliverer of the fallen souls will have meaning. The way your glory is increased by delivering me will be much more if you deliver these two fallen souls. Lord Vishvambara smilingly replied, These drunkards were already delivered the moment they had your darshan. Since you desire their ultimate benefit, Krishna will soon deliver them. Hearing this from the lotus mouth of the Lord, all the Vaishnavas began to chant, Hari, Hari! This convinced everyone that now these two drunkards will be saved. Then, Haridas Thakur said to Advaita Acharya, The Lord sent me with this restless boy. I remain somewhere while he goes somewhere else. The Ganges is filled with crocodiles in the rainy season, but Nityananda sometimes tries to catch them while swimming. I loudly call and warn him from the bank, but alas, he floats fearlessly in the water with the crocodiles. When he comes out of the water, then seeing some of his friends, he chases them to beat them. When the parents of those boys come with sticks in their hands, I fall at their feet and beg pardon on his behalf. Sometimes he steals ghee and yogurt from the coward men and runs away. Those coward men then catch me and try to beat me instead. He does things he is not supposed to. Whenever he sees an unmarried girl, he tells her, I will marry you. Sometimes he rides on the back of an ox and calls himself Mahadev. At other times he milks others' cows and drinks the milk. If I try to teach him something, he scolds me. He boldly says, What can your Advaita Acharya do to me? He also says, What can your Chaitanya, who you think is Lord, do to me? I'm not afraid of him. I never disclose these things to the Lord. Today, providence has saved us from imminent danger. We saw two drunks lying in a stupor on the street. Nityananda went before them repeating the message of the Lord. With cruel anger, the two drunkards rushed after us to beat us up. I think it is by your mercy alone that we were saved today. Then Advaita Acharya smilingly replied, This doesn't surprise me at all. A drunk will naturally keep company with another drunk. Three drunkards can remain together. Being a strict celibate, why do you mingle with him? You'll see, this Nityananda will turn everyone into a drunkard. I know him very well, just you wait and see. Within a few days, he will bring those two drunkards to the assembly of devotees. While speaking this way, Advaita Acharya became very angry. In a grave voice he said, We'll soon see Lord Chaitanya's wonderful love and devotion towards Lord Krishna as well as his power to induce everyone to dance and chant for Krishna. You will see tomorrow, Nimai and Nitai will bring these two drunkards here and dance with them. Nimai and Nitai will not discriminate about the drunkard's position. But I think you and I will have to leave this place to safeguard our social prestige. Seeing Advaita Acharya's angry mood, Haridas Thakur began to laugh. 
He thought that the two drunkards would definitely become delivered very soon. Who can understand the words of Advaita Acharya? Only Haridas Prabhu understood their meaning. Nowadays, so many sinful persons take shelter of Advaita Acharya and criticize Gadadhar Pandit. Thus, they are soon vanquished. A sinful person who takes the side of a Vaishnava and criticizes another will positively be destroyed. The two drunkards, Jagai and Madai, wandered all over Navadweep. One day they came to the bathing ghat of the Ganges where Lord Chaitanya usually takes bath. By providence, the drunkards also made their camp at that ghat. During the day, they would wander around Navadweep searching for their prey. All the people including the highly respectable, rich and famous artisans became very much afraid of them. After dusk, no one dared to go to the Ganges to take bath. If someone went at all, he would go with a group of 10 or 20. At night, the two drunkards stayed nearby the house of the Lord and thus remained awake all night, hearing sounds of kirtan. While the Murdangas and Kartals sounded during the kirtan, the two drunkards would happily dance. They could hear the kirtan from afar. As soon as they heard the sacred sounds of kirtan, they would dance and drink more wine. Whenever kirtan begins, they would quickly get up and dance. Wine so much bewildered them that they did not know a thing. Where they were before or where they would be after. Whenever Jagai and Madai met the Lord, they would say, Nimai Pandit, did you finish singing your prayers to Goddess Dorgo? Actually, you all sing very well, and we want to see and hear you sing. We'll give you everything that we gather from the day. The Lord, however, always stayed aloof from them. Knowing them to be most sinful, everyone avoided them in the same way. One day, after traveling around Nadia, Nityananda Prabhu was returning home in the evening. Suddenly, the two brothers caught him. Jagai and Madai screamed, Who is this? Who are you? Nityananda Prabhu replied, I'm going to Lord Chaitanya's house. Drunk as usual, they asked Lord Nityananda, What's your name? Nityananda replied, My name is Avaduta. Absorbed in childhood mood, Lord Nityananda thus started to talk with the two drunkards out of his sweet pastimes. He had already decided to deliver these two fallen souls. He thus purposely came to their place at night. Hearing the name Avadut, Madai became extremely angry. He picked up his pitcher and hit Lord Nityananda on the head. As the pitcher hit Lord Nityananda's head, it cut him and he began to bleed. Nityananda Prabhu simply remembered Govinda. Seeing Lord Nityananda's bleeding, Jagai became compassionate. He forbade Madai from hitting the Lord again. Jagai said, Why do you do such a cruel thing? What will you gain by killing a beggar? Leave him, leave him. It's no good to kill a sannyasi. People quickly went and told Lord Chaitanya about this incident. The Lord instantly rushed to the spot along with his associates. Blood flew from Lord Nityananda's head. He still simply smiled standing between the two sinners. Seeing blood on Nityananda Prabhu's head, Lord Chaitanya went into a trance and began to invoke his Sudarshan Chakra. The Sudarshan Chakra instantly appeared there and Jagai and Madai personally saw it. All the devotees became totally perplexed. In the meantime, Lord Nityananda quickly began to persuade the Lord. Lord Nityananda said, Oh Lord, when Madai tried to hit me again, this Jagai actually saved me. Just by chance, blood came out. I'm not at all disturbed. Oh Lord, I beg you, please give me these two bodies and arms. Please be calm because I have no distress. As soon as Lord Chaitanya heard that Jagai actually saved Nityananda Prabhu, he became pleased and embraced Jagai. The Lord said to Jagai, May Krishna be merciful to you. You have purchased me by saving Nityananda. Ask for any boon you so desire. From today, you will achieve loving devotional service. When the Vaishnavas heard the Lord's benediction to Jagai, they jubilantly chanted, All glories to Lord Hari. As soon as the Lord gave pure devotional service to Jagai, he at once fell senseless to the ground. The Lord said, Jagai, please get up and look at me. 
I have indeed awarded you love and devotion. Then Jagai saw the beautiful four-handed form of Lord Vishwambara holding a conch, a disc, a club, and a lotus in his hand. Seeing this form of Lord Chaitanya, Jagai again fell senseless to the ground. Sri Goranga then placed his lotus feet on his chest. He obtained the wealth of the Lord's lotus feet, which are the life and soul of Lakshmi. Jagai caught hold of these invaluable jewels on his chest. Holding the Lord's lotus feet, Jagai began to cry. Such is the wonderful pastime of Sri Goranga. Jagai and Madai were one, but they had appeared in two different bodies. Their piety and sins were also one. As the Lord bestowed mercy on Jagai, Madai's heart became purified and changed. In a moment, he took hold of the Lord's cloth and with folded hands he fell at Lord Chaitanya's feet. He appealed to the Lord, O oh Lord, both Jagai and I committed sins together. Why then do you discriminate in giving your mercy? Please be merciful to me and I'll surely chant your holy names. There's no one else in the world who can save me. The Lord said, I see no hope for your salvation. You dared to cut Nityananda's body and make it bleed. Madai replied, O oh Lord, don't say that. Why do you give up your own merciful nature? When the demons shot arrows at you, why did you still give them your lotus feet? The Lord said, Your offense is much more grave since you made Nityananda bleed. Actually, Nityananda is far greater than I am. I make this firm truth known to you. Madai asked, O oh Lord, if you have indeed told me the truth, then please tell me how I will be saved. You are the crest jewel among all doctors, expert in curing all diseases. Therefore, only if you cure me will my disease be cured. O oh Lord of the universe, please don't cheat me. Now I know who you are. How can you hide yourself now? The Lord said, You committed a grave offense at the feet of Nityananda. Now fall at his lotus feet and beg for pardon. Ordered by the Lord, Madai at once caught hold of the invaluable wealth of Lord Nityananda's lotus feet, which are well known to Ravati. Vishwambara said to Nityananda Prabhu, Listen, Nityananda, it is proper that if someone falls at your lotus feet, you should be merciful to him. Since he made you bleed, only you can forgive him. Now he has surrendered unto you. Nityananda replied, O oh Lord, what can I say? You can bestow mercy to anyone, even to a tree. If I have any piety amassed from previous birth, I'm giving it all to Madai. I'm telling you the truth. I don't care for the offenses that he's done to me. O oh Lord, please remove your illusory energy and be merciful. This Madai belongs to you. Vishwambara said, If you've indeed forgiven all of his sins, then please embrace him so that his life will become successful. Instructed by the Lord, Nityananda Prabhu tightly embraced Madai. All his material bondage and mass of sins were destroyed. Nityananda Prabhu entered into the body of Madai and thus Madai became fully equipped with all the energies of the Lord. Thus both Jagai and Madai were delivered. Then they offered prayers at the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu then commanded them, Sin no more. Jagai and Madai replied, Dear Father, no more, not again. The Lord continued, Listen, both of you, I have indeed saved you from all of your sinful reactions. If you do not sin again, then I'll destroy all of your sinful reactions from millions of births. This is my responsibility. I'll eat offerings through your mouths and incarnate through your bodies. Hearing these words from the Lord, both Jagai and Madai fell unconscious on the ground in ecstasy. Their illusions thus removed, they floated in the ocean of happiness. The all-knowing Lord instructed, Take both of them to my house. Tonight we'll perform Sankirtan with them. I'll reward these two with what even Lord Brahma rarely attains. Thus, I'll turn them into the best of persons in this world. The same people who took bath in the Ganges after touching these brothers will now say that these two brothers are as good as the Ganges. Nityananda's promise never goes in vain. 
know that this is indeed the desire of Nityananda Prabhu. Then all the Vaishnavas carefully escorted Jagai and Madai into the house of the Lord. When all of the associates and relatives of the Lord came inside, they closed the main door and allowed no one from the outside to come in. Mahaprabhu Vishvambara sat in the middle of the house. Nityananda Prabhu sat on the right of the Lord while Gadadhar Pandit sat on his left. Advaita Acharya, the greatest recipient of the Lord's mercy, sat in front of them. All the Vaishnavas sat on the four sides of their lordships. There the devotees headed by Pundarik Vidyanidhi, Garuda, Ramai, Srivas and Gangadas. Also present were Vakreshwara Pandit, Chandrasekhar Acharya. Both of them knew the mission of Lord Chaitanya. Many other devotees sat around Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu floating in the ocean of bliss along with Jagai and Madai. The pure loving symptoms such as standing of the hair on end, shedding of tears and shivering were visible all on their bodies. Both Jagai and Madai simply rolled on the ground. Who could understand the intention of Lord Chaitanya? He transformed the two great plunderers into two great devotees. The Lord said, these two are no longer drunkards. From now on, they are my servants. All of you please bestow mercy on these two so that they may never forget me life after life. In whatever way you may have been offended by them, forgive them and bestow your mercy on them. Hearing the words of the Lord, Jagai and Madai fell at the feet of all the assembled Vaishnavas and begged pardon. All the great devotees then blessed Jagai and Madai, who were instantly freed from all offenses. The Lord said, Please get up, O Jagai and Madai. Do not worry, from now on you are my servants. Personally, I will not take their offenses. No one should think them sinful anymore. Such an act is never possible in this very lifetime. Know it for certain that it was by the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu alone. Actually, I have taken all their sinful reactions on myself. O oh, brothers, you all can see the proof of this directly. To convince everyone of this, the golden body of the Lord immediately turned black. Converting the two plunderers and drunkards into pure devotees, Lord Sri Goranga, who was non-different from Hari, began to dance with his associates. In this way, Sri Gorachandra, the life and soul of the universe, delivered Jagai and Madai. Sri Gorachandra will certainly deliver whoever hears of the salvation of Jagai and Madai. Accepting Sri Chaitanya and Nityananda Prabhu as my life and soul, I, Vrindavan Das, sing the glories of their lotus feet.